How much poverty should exist in the world? If it was up to you, how much poverty should there be? How about zero? I bet nearly all of you in the audience would agree that if it was up to you, the right answer is zero. But is this what's happening? Of course it's not. Why is it that humanity is collectively failing so miserably at achieving this? It's not as though there's a lack of money in the world. Credit Suisse estimates that there's $317 trillion in the world. This is a staggering amount of money. It's hard to put your head around it. If you made a stack of $100 bills, one on top of the other, that stack would reach over 200,000 miles into the air, to the surface of the moon. Okay? We do not have a problem of scarcity. We have a problem of distribution. The 26th richest people on Earth control as much wealth as the bottom half of people on Earth. 3.8 billion people. Two billion of these people have effectively zero wealth. They live in dire poverty. Now, poverty can be defined and thought about in many ways. I like to think of the simplest and most literal definition. Poverty is a lack of money. And given this definition, there is in fact a way to eliminate poverty. We could give money to everyone. In the next few minutes, I'd like to outline why we should do this, why we should give money to everyone, and how perhaps we could actually do it. So, why? Why should we eliminate poverty? Of course, it would be wonderful to eliminate some of the tragedy, the human suffering involved in poverty. There's 63 million children in the world that should be in school and are not. There's 800 million people that starve. There's millions of others that suffer from medical conditions, like abdominal worms, that could be cured for as little as one dollar worth of medicine that they can't afford. This is such a waste. How about the positive side? What sorts of things could we unlock if we ended poverty? Think of the billions of people in the world who are so focused on meeting their mere survival needs that they cannot contribute their brilliance and their talents to society. What if we changed that? Imagine young Rosaline. She lives in Haiti in abject poverty with her mother and two brothers. Every day they struggle to ensure that there will be enough food on the table for dinner. But sadly, they don't always succeed. One of the terrible decisions that they may have to make is that Rosaline doesn't always get to go to school. And while this is sad for Rosaline, perhaps it's worse for humanity. You see, Rosaline, if she goes on to get an appropriate education, will do amazing things. It will be her discovery that allows us to cure cancer. We want her to do this. All of us will benefit. The value to humanity will be incalculable. But unless she gets an education, it won't happen. How many people out there cannot share their gifts because of poverty? What if we changed this? How about a moral argument? John Rawls talked about the veil of ignorance. It's the idea that you can evaluate an ethical decision by putting yourself behind this veil. The veil prevents you from seeing how the outcome of the decision you're making impacts you. He asked, for example, how much slavery should exist in the world? Now, if you choose, say, 10%, that means there's a 10% chance that you yourself could end up a slave. And most people can see in this setup that the only ethical answer is zero, since none of us would want to end up a slave ourselves. Perhaps a simpler example. Imagine a few of us were sitting down to play the board game Monopoly together. Now, in this game, we all need some money at the beginning. So, should we hand money to everyone? Or should we exclude some people and give them none? Remember, if you choose that we should exclude some people, then you yourself may be excluded. Again, it's pretty easy to see the answer, right? Everyone should get some Monopoly money. It's also a simple problem to solve. Reach in the box, pull out some money, and hand it around the table. Great. Well, what if we could do this in the real world? What if there was a way to distribute money to people all over the world such that they could meet their basic needs and everyone had enough to participate in the game of life? Many people refer to this concept as universal basic income, or UBI. It's not a new idea. It's been around for over 500 years. It's the idea that we would give money unconditionally to people with no strings attached such that they had a foundation to support themselves. 
Perhaps the most successful example so far has been the Alaska Permanent Fund. For the past 30 plus years, this fund has paid out between one and $2,000 every single year to every citizen of Alaska, man, woman, and child. Imagine this on a far grander scale. I work with a group of people called Open UBI, trying to build the technological solutions to make this possible on a worldwide scale. I'd now like to tell you about three key concepts that we need to think about about how this could actually work. One, who should we give this money to? Two, where will this money come from? And three, how will we get it into people's hands? So, who should we give it to? Everyone. Literally everyone. 7.7 billion people. Make this a human right. It doesn't matter your race, your religion, your location, or even your economic situation. What gives this its strength is that it's for everyone. Now, I will note here that my, my ideas are in the minority. Most thinking and experimenting with UBI so far has involved just giving it to a specific group, perhaps citizens of a city or of a country. When I think about this, I focus on the word universal. Give it to everyone. Make it a human right. So we know who to give it to. How are we going to raise this money? Remember, humanity has a staggering amount of money. It goes all the way to the moon. What we need to do is find and inspire some portion of us that want the system to be different and show them that it can be different. People already give generously throughout the world philanthropy, right? And I believe that we could inspire even bolder giving if we could convince them that this could create transformational change, and I believe that it can. Imagine there was a system that allowed you to send any amount of money pooled with other people, and that money would be distributed to people all over the world. Would you consider sending $10 to such a system? And once we get it going, what if we should get businesses involved? What if we create a campaign that businesses should donate 1% of profits to humanity? They could proudly put a logo on their door, on their packaging. Their customers would know what they were doing. Imagine this becoming the norm. Would you be more interested in shopping at a business that shared back to everyone including you? So now we have a source of money. How will we get it into all, everyone's hands? And the answer is cell phones. Over 5 billion people on Earth have, ac have access to a cell phone. 2.5 billion have access to a smartphone. And at this point, more people in the world have access to a cell phone than to a flushing toilet. In addition to the growth of cell phones has been the growth of digital money. Services like Venmo in the US, WeChat in China, M-Pesa in Kenya. More and more people are embracing digital money on their phones in place of dirty slips of paper, and this trend will only continue. Perhaps more interesting is the advent of decentralized cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin and Ethereum. With these services, we can send money directly to people. It lands on their phone with no need for middlemen, and no chance of sticky-fingered corruption stealing all along the way. Now, I will note, not everyone has a cell phone yet. It's true. But the numbers continue to grow. Inexpensive phones can be purchased for just a few dollars. And multiple people can share the same device. If you could get signed up on your friend's device for these universal distributions of money, then you would be able to purchase your own. So great, everyone's got a phone, we've got the money. What are we going to do next? Well, a few of us are going to launch an experiment. We're going to try to give $1 to every person on Earth, including all of you. And I realize this sounds a little crazy, but hear me out. We have the first $10,000 raised. And with that, we're going to give $1 to the first 10,000 people anywhere in the world that join this program. They'll sign up on their cell phone, they'll get registered, and we'll send them $1 worth of cryptocurrency. We'll send a stable coin, so it's always worth $1. It's fast and easy to use. And once we've done this, once we've given a dollar to 10,000 people, we'll have a story, right? When we give you the dollar, it's yours. You can do with it as you like. You can spend it, you can save it, you can convert it to your local currency. If you don't need a dollar, even better. Click one button and you can send it back to the pool to be distributed to someone else. Either way, we've given to 10,000 people. 
And the story gets more interesting, right? And with that, we raise $100,000 and give to 100,000 people, and the story gets more interesting still. From there, we raise a million and give to a million people. And now we have some buzz. Traditional and social media have taken note. Perhaps Ellen will invite me on her talk show to discuss this. Right? And Ellen, if you're watching this TED Talk someday, I can't wait to meet you. Right? From there, we raise 10 million and we give to 10 million people. And by this point, we've proven that this system can change the world. While we, while we will have only given $1 to each person, we will have created this network. And networks have value. And while we've only given $1 to each person, it's simple to give it to them again. Right? Once you have an email address, you can get all the emails you want and a whole bunch you don't want. Right? So, there's only one catch, though. Right? There's a problem here. Defining everyone for a system like this is exceptionally difficult. There is currently no organization on Earth that knows who all the people are. Perhaps we could have some grand coalition of the governments, right? Because they all work so well together, right? There are over one billion people on Earth who have never had any form of government identification whatsoever. There's billions more with shaky documents. And even if everyone did have a document, would they all be worthy of our trust? Could you imagine some dictator creating millions of fake supporters? Or some leader deciding to exclude the persecuted minorities in their community? No, I don't think that government can be the solution. Perhaps some giant commercial company, like Facebook or Google, right? No, please, these companies already have far too much control, influence, and power in our lives. What I believe that we need is an open and decentralized network where all people can come and prove that they are part of everyone. I'm very excited about an open source project called Bright ID. They're trying to build a public utility for humanity. It is owned by all of us. It lets all people come and prove that they are a real person while keeping out the duplicates and the fakes, right? This, this system has no central authority, no profit motivation. It does not store any of your private information and everyone is welcome to use it. I believe that this system will allow the wide distribution of all sorts of different UBIs. Our program plans to use it, but there's no limitation to other things that it can do. Right now, there's not much you can do with the system just yet. It's sort of a sandbox with no toys in it, but we need you guys to come play in there, right? We need to figure out how to make it better, how to make it work. By the time we go to launch this Dollar for Everyone program, we need the process to be smooth especially for the people that really need this. And if you do come in, you'll be first in line to get your free dollar. So, hey, that's something. In the coming months, I hope to give all of you a free dollar. Because by engaging in this experiment, we can show that giving to all the people, universal sharing is a possible thing. This should be an option for humanity. We should be able to share with everyone. And if we can prove that this is possible, I believe we will have made a giant step towards creating a world with zero poverty. Thank you very much.